April 25th, Thursday is the highest crypto and blockchain industry. I'm Zhu. Welcome to the headline sponsored by Deepcoin. Yesterday, after failing to break through 67,000 multiple times, Bitcoin started to fluctuate and decline around 8 p.m., reaching a low of 63,602 around 4 a.m. today. As of 2 p.m., Bitcoin is at 64,234, down 3.7% in nearly 24 hours. Ethereum followed Bitcoin's decline, almost losing 3,100 at one point, currently at 3,157, down 3% 3 in 24 hours. Most of the other top 10 cryptocurrencies by market cap have also declined in nearly 24 hours, except for BNB, which is still above 600, slightly up 0.02%. So Dodge and ADA all have a drop of nearly 6%. Since March, Bitcoin has repeatedly tested the 60,000 level, each time quickly rebounding after breakdown, indicating that many investors chose to buy the dip at this price level. Therefore, this is a support level worth paying attention to. Since Bitcoin's rebound from the bottom of 59,000 on April 17th, the taker-buy-sell ratio has also seen a slight uptrend. But after entering above 1, the trend has been significantly hindered. Although Bitcoin's price continued to rise in the early part of last week, the taker value still failed to move up effectively and fell below 1 after Bitcoin's decline in the past two days. This also shows that most investors are bearish at present. When the market is rising, sentiment consensus is still needed, but when the market is failing, panic can be easily triggered, indicating that 64,000 is not an ideal level to buy the dip. Affected by the Bitcoin halving, miners' mining revenues have seen a significant decline, but the recent craze in Ordinals market has brought a ray of light to miners, allowing them to enjoy excess fee income. The halving of mining revenue has had an impact on the group of miners with older mining rigs, and there has been some selling sentiment in the market. In the past few days, miner reserves have declined from a high of 1.807 million Bitcoin to 1.805 million Bitcoin, a slight drop of nearly 2,000 Bitcoin. The overall holding amount remains at a relatively high level, and the sentiment of the mining group is still relatively stable without significant signs of selling. Compared to diamond hands who invest clinically, miners are truly a stable money printing machine in the crypto market. In the cryptocurrency world, the Bitcoin halving is always a heavyweight bomb, drawing the attention and speculation of countless people. First, let's review the history of Bitcoin halvings. Each halving has been like injecting new vitality into this virtual world. However, this vitality is not immediately apparent. In fact, after the halvings in 2016 and 2020, Bitcoin's price did not immediately skyrocket, but instead experienced a period of volatility. But in the long run, the halving did drive up Bitcoin's price. So what will be different this time? Coinbase, as a leading global cryptocurrency exchange platform, has provided an in-depth analysis of the market trend after the halving and the potential variables in the global economy. Let's take a look together. Coinbase believes that while the direct impact of halving on Bitcoin prices may be limited, the increase in Bitcoin scarcity it represents, along with the resulting boost in investor confidence, will be significant factors driving market uptrend. Coinbase sees stablecoin net growth as the primary means of injecting liquidity into altcoins. Stablecoins participate in 65% of the daily average trading activity of DEX and overall stablecoin activity is nearing previous historical highs. Concerns about rising inflation have led to an increasing correlation between Bitcoin and gold in March and April indicating Bitcoin's strengthening position as a sensitive macro asset in the absence of specific cryptocurrency catalysts such as the approval of spot ETFs. Under the same condition, the Bitcoin halving simply like injecting a strong dose of adrenaline into the crypto world. Although we all know that changes in the macroeconomic environment and the constant emergence of crypto vertical industries have always been catalysts for igniting cyclical bull markets. Despite potential sideways movements for a period, each major cycle has been accompanied by a surge that breaks past the previous highs. This process is like simmering a good soup. It needs to be cooked slowly with each cycle having its unique flavor. Our current soup pot may taste even more unique due to the influx ETF funds like a tidal wave, while risk investment is relatively restrained. Hong Kong, this international financial center, is about to witness a revolutionary event in the cryptocurrency realm. The Hong Kong Securities and Futures Commission has officially approved the spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETF products from Huaxi Fund, Harvest Fund, and Bobo Fund. 
This means that investors will be able to directly purchase these cryptocurrency spot ETFs through traditional securities accounts, enjoying the investment opportunities brought by the cryptocurrency market. Now, six Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs are set to be officially listed and traded on April 30th, causing a huge stir among investors. According to analysts at Bloomberg, these spot cryptocurrency ETFs are expected to accumulate assets under management of approximately $1 billion within the next one to two years. The issuance of these spot ETFs will also trigger a fierce fee war. Currently, the disclosed fee rates by various issuers are 0.30%, 0.6%, and 0.99%, significantly lower than market expectations. This strategy seems aimed at attracting more investors and capturing market share. The outcome of this fee war will directly impact investors' returns and the competitive landscape of the market. This figure not only showcases the enormous potential of Hong Kong's cryptocurrency market, but also reflects investors' enthusiasm and confidence in cryptocurrencies. It's worth noting that although Hong Kong's cryptocurrency market is booming, mainland Chinese investors cannot directly participate due to policy restrictions. This will likely have some impact on the inflow of funds into Hong Kong's spot cryptocurrency ETFs. However, this has not prevented Hong Kong from becoming an innovation hub in the cryptocurrency realm. The listing of Hong Kong's Bitcoin and Ethereum spot ETFs not only provides investors with a new investment channel, but also brings new development opportunities to the cryptocurrency market. As regulations become clearer and the market environment continues to improve. In November last year, Binance founder CZ admitted to violating U.S. anti-money laundering laws and other charges, stepped down as Binance CEO and paid a 1.75 billion U.S. dollar bond for release. After months of waiting, the sentencing hearing will take place on April 30th. Since CZ pleaded guilty and cooperated, many legal experts believe he is likely to avoid prison time. However, some prosecutors argue that Binance's involvement in a Hamas money laundering case should be highly unfavorable for CZ. Now, with just five days until the sentencing hearing, CZ has appeared in the public eye with an apology letter in what seems to be a plea drama similar to SBF's case. Let's take a look. Just before the trial, Zhao Chengpeng sent a letter of apology to Judge Richard A. Jones, who presided over the case. In the letter, he expressed regret for his wrong decisions and acknowledged the need to take full responsibility for his actions. In addition to his apology letter, there were 161 letters of support from family, friends, and others pleading for Zhao Chengpeng. Among these letters, the mother of CZ's three children, He Yi, likened Zhao Changpeng to a guardian of the crypto wilderness and shared anecdotes of the children supporting their father, hoping that the judge wouldn't define Zhao Changpeng's character solely based on this incident. However, just as Zhao and his loved ones were making efforts to plead for leniency, the U.S. Department of Justice dropped the bombshell. They recommended sentencing Zhao to 36 months in prison and a 50 million fine. This recommendation is much harsher than the 18 months in prison Zhao was originally expected to face. In a sentencing memorandum, the Justice Department stated that Zhao's misconduct was extensive and consequential, making the increased sentence appropriate. In this plea drama, each of Zhao's apology letters and support letters serves as a bargaining chip in his defense, while the Justice Department's sentencing recommendation is a heavy blow putting him in an even more passive position. Regardless of the final outcome, this storm has become an indelible mark in Binance history. What sentence will Zhao ultimately face and what will become his Binance empire? On the 18th of this month, the leading stablecoin issuer Tether announced the implementation of a new corporate framework, establishing subsidiaries focused on data, finance, energy, and education to expand its business scope beyond the USDT product. Tether CEO Paolo Andorino hopes to disrupt the traditional financial system and reshape the financial landscape with the stablecoin USDT. As the saying goes, the taller the tree, the more wind it attracts. The more arrogant you are, the more people will come to straighten you out. 
although most U.S. dollar stablecoin issuers, including the market leader USDT, are currently not subject to U.S. regulations. Last week, the latest proposed U.S. Stablecoin Act aims to ban algorithmic stablecoins, require issuers to fully back their tokens 101, and implement anti-money laundering frameworks. If this act eventually passes, it will impact Tether's dominance. Rating agency SP Global noted that the stablecoin bill authorizes national non-depository trust companies registered with the Federal Reserve to issue up to $10 billion in stablecoins without restrictions on depository institutions, giving banks a competitive advantage. Moreover, this bill is unlikely to have a significant impact on stablecoins already regulated by the New York Department of Financial Services, NYDFS, including PayPal USD, Gemini USD, and Paxos USD, as they fall well below the $10 billion threshold. Additionally, since Tether is issued by non s entities, it is not a permitted payment stablecoin under the proposed bill, meaning us users cannot hold or trade Tether, potentially reducing demand while boosting us issued stablecoins. The regulation and the governance of stablecoins has been an old topic of discussion. The U.S. has been talking about regulating stablecoins since 2021 and has drafted a stablecoin regulation. But it is still just talk on paper with no real hammer falling. This pace is really too efficient. Perhaps this time the Stablecoin Act is truly unfavorable for USDT. But given the efficiency of the US government's legislation and the speed of the regulatory agencies, who knows when the stablecoin market will be reshuffled? Just think about how the SEC has been dragging its feet on approving the Bitcoin spot ETF and then the Ethereum spot ETF. The US legislative and regulatory agencies work at the same time slow pace. The blockchain industry is developing rapidly, and if the regulatory agencies can even keep up with the basic speed, how can they talk about regulation? Up its trading volume accounts for over 80% of the total trading volume in South Korea, elevating its global sex ranking to fifth place, on par with Coinbase. Data disclosed on the X platform reveals that Solana surpasses all other chains, including Bitcoin and Ethereum, in annual NFT blockchain user adoption rate accounting for 33% and boasting 1.3 million blockchain users. Chain gaming studio Infinigods announced securing $8 million in series of funding exclusively invested by Pantera Capital. The number of traders on Ethereum's DEX has dropped from over 95,000 earlier this month to 63,000 last week, marking the lowest level of trader count since February. Recently, the first quarter transaction volume of NFT-backed lending markets surpassed $2 billion, witnessing a continuous 44% growth compared to the fourth quarter of 2023. The regulation and the governance of stablecoins has been an old topic of discussion. The U.S. has been talking about regulating stablecoins since 2021 and has drafted a stablecoin regulation. But it is still just talk on paper with no real hammer falling. This pace is really too efficient. Perhaps this time the stablecoin act is truly unfavorable for USDT. But given the efficiency of the U.S. government's legislation and the speed of the regulatory agencies, who knows when the stablecoin market will be reshuffled? Just think about how the SEC has been dragging its feet on approving the Bitcoin spot ETF and then the Ethereum spot ETF. The US legislative and regulatory agencies work at the same time slow pace. The blockchain industry is developing rapidly and if the regulatory agencies can't even keep up with the basic speed, how can they talk about regulation?